Good morning, everyone. My name is Monica Negi, and on behalf of Go.ai, ClearTouch, Essendon, Flow, Pulse, Hodosoft, Remote Desk, Twixer, Calibrio, Viva Digitally, One Point One Solutions, Czentrix, MyHope, and UBS Forums, I welcome you all to this exclusive conference on our twelfth edition of BPO Innovation Summit and Awards, twenty twenty-three. Before starting the session. I thank you all for joining us today, for sparing your time. It uh, it is our pleasure to have you all leaders on board it under one roof. And for this, to celebrate your presence, can I have a huge round of applause to celebrate your presence here? Thank you. The new normal is acting as a catalyst for the rapid transformation of the transform traditional BPO model. It is shining. a light on how flexible outsourcing partners have been with their clients when conditions change rapidly and how far along the digital journey they have ventured where outsourcing lacks preparedness and flexibility customers may choose to end the relationship and perhaps take work back in house equally there will be cases where providers are lauded for their practical approach how bpos respond beyond the immediate crisis will determine the winners and losers in the future and whether the industry as a whole thrives or no with this note let me introduce our keynote speaker for the day who will be covering his opening remarks on discover your path making bpo ready to cope up in next decade for this i'll request everyone to please welcome mr bala prasad padigari Chief Innovation Officer and Global Head Technology Advisory Services from TCS. A small note about Bala sir. Mr. Bala has been working with TCS for over 24 years. He is responsible for driving the purpose-driven transformation program with technology enablers, research, and innovation functions. Over to you, Bala sir. Thank you. Pardon me on that. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining this. Bio Innovation Summit. Very warm welcome to all of you. Before I start, we all know business process outsourcing means BPO. We all call, but I always call BPO as a being patient. Often, how many times has it happened with all of you that you call a call center and you need to wait and listen to? A beautiful music, elevator music. It happened with you. You are kept on hold. So the experience of keeping it on hold makes a customer a not a happy customer. In this today's technology, you need to understand that getting a rapid response, getting a rapid view of responding to the question is very very critical and important. We need to start. embracing the technology we need to start converting that particular technology into an experience which customer can really see i just want to narrate a small story which happened with me recently there was a situation demanded that i need to fly my wife and son to london particularly to leeds and we booked the ticket and make my trip and they on boarded the flight in hyderabad had a halt at delhi and when they got in at delhi and went to the lufthansa airlines this was the lufthansa air vistar i air lufthansa team they were asked not to board the flight because they did not have a transit visa for a halt at frankfurt which we were not aware so what happened they were denied to board the flight it was midnight to 2:33 o'clock they were calling me what to be done what you would have done if you were in the same situation the airlines people said your luggage has been taken out you cannot board this flight what you would you do you want to reach the call center they are not available to respond what would you do at that situation because the demand was there i need to send this people i need to book another ticket with a higher cost to qatar airways to doha to manchester and they were able to reach safely but remember after the episode we were trying to constantly reach out to make my trip lufthansa airlines reliance insurance to 
ensure that we get some kind of a response. It's been almost like a 17 days. No one accepted. Call centers keep on getting this particular request. Every time I call, three, four people will come on the call. Every time I need to repeat the same story. What is that we are missing here? They say that they are recording the calls, they have the transcript, they have the stories, but still that information is not exchanged and made available to the call center person. That is a one level. Majority of the BPOs are in the same lines. But on the contrary, if you are trying to see, there are some extremely good call centers or BPOs which are operating with a greater information value exchange. One of the best call center I have seen is MX. Any query you try to make with MX, single person empowerment is there. You can make the decision on your behalf because he has all the information available and you not repeat the story. You can do, solve the query with the empowered approach. First thing is if you really wanted to leverage technology and improve the experience, it is important that you empower the people. You don't create a kind of a bureaucracy or put down that limitation, but you empower the people. No matter whatever the technology is there, if the empowerment is not there, you always get into this particular loop level. How many of you got the passports? First time when you got the passport, some people are a little older, like me. It took three months to get the passport. But if you are renewals or when you are applying a new passport for your kids, how much time it takes today? Two to three days? What changed dramatically from 90 days to two to three days? No, it's not TCS. <laughs> so, extremely sorry. It's not TCS. TCS has only facilitated that. What dramatically changed is information exchange across the ministries. Ministries who are hesitant to share the information within their departments, now they are able to freely share. There is a vision from government of India, by leveraging this power of technology, they wanted to issue the passport immediately. It means you are getting, applying the passport, but when you are walking out, you are walking out with your passport. All the checks, all the validations, everything can be done instantly. Do you all agree? Is it possible or not? So that is possible only when you are binding the technology and empowerment together to make it happen. The interesting piece which I am trying to make is, do you all agree that we are at the dawn of a new era where adaptation, adapting to the situations and innovation will be the key in the new normal? How many of you agree with me that in the new normal, that is post-COVID situation, pre-COVID situation, there is a huge amount of transformation which has been resulted in the BPOs. Do you all agree with me? That is primarily because we were pushed to the boundaries and we were challenged and we need to come out with the proper solutions to address that challenge. There is a plethora of opportunities what we see today when you are working on that particular possibilities, when you are trying to look into that particular future. You can unlock this future with a lot many possibilities which can make things much, much more powerful. As I say, you also need to take a pill of thought. How are traditional call centers were there? We are having a kind of a reactive way of dealing with the things. But with the power of technology, today with the virtual assistants, I was walking through that particular aisles to see the kind of a, uh, posters. There is a customer experience. AI, conversational AI platforms, virtual AI assistants, they have already transforming the things. In the modern BPOs or call centers, you see the power of technology getting used. When you are binding that, you see there is a huge, huge amount of transformation you will be seeing as part of your overall course of the journey. Today when we see that how technology is embracing the future, how the technology is embracing the change in lifestyles or change in our approaches, change in our thought process, you see that today all the BPO centers are trying to modernize themselves. Just by mere modernization, it's not sufficient. You need to apply that modernization into the context 
of improving the services, improving the experiences, and solving the things instantly. How many of you believe today that BPOs are empowered to make the decisions? Level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4. People just pass on that particular matter to the different levels, but not go with an approach to shift left, where the people can take the decisions faster, quicker, then and there itself. There might be some element of risk you need to understand, but not necessary that every decision you want to pass on to the level 3, level 4 people. You agree? Because data is available, processes are in place, information is in place, people can act. When you make the people act, you will be able to make a tremendous improvement in the entire experience. There was an organization called uh, Zappos. How many of you know about that? I see one hand coming in. One of the best call center they ever do. They empower their employees in such a way that any customer calls any time, they will be responding with a lot of polite. In fact, there was an episode which happened that one of the customer called the Zappos call center and <coughs> he was asking, I lost in the road, I need to find a way out to the pizza house, pizza hut. And that guy, from the call, he was able to discover where he was trying to locate and guided him to that particular location. Another episode happened where the delivery boy of the Zappos was delivering a shoes for an old lady which our, who ordered the shoes for her husband. But by the time the delivery happened, her husband passed away. This guy looked at the situation, he did not even respond to anything. He just took that particular shoes, mentioned about the situation, took a kind of a flower bouquet, offered the condolences and on the behalf of Zappos and just claimed it. That's a kind of an empowerment and experience makes a big difference. So just to reflect on that particular thought, we have witnessed a lot of disruptions have resulted. We are all, during the COVID times, we were operating under a lot of constraints, a lot of challenges. Many countries have started imposing constraints at a different levels. And still we emerged with a lot of success, a lot of opportunities got triggered, a lot of transformation, transformations which got triggered. Primarily because when a challenge comes to us in this new normal, we are trying to unlock the challenge and trying to find out what are the new opportunities which we can really go and fetch it. These disruptions are making us best. These disruptions are making us to understand how we withstand this particular new normal situations. How many of you are still facing the situation where your employees does not want to come to office? They want to still work from home. You are still finding it as a challenge? In fact, in these years, we find it as a challenge. 50% plus people doesn't want to come, from, come to office at all. In fact, there was a situation that more than 100,000 people who joined in TCS during the COVID times left the TCS without seeing the TCS office. And there are, you might be seeing in the education also during the COVID times, people graduated in the MTech programs without even visiting the colleges. Yes or no? So, the dis but do you see that education quality level has gone down or improved? With the power of technology, the way we taught to the students, with the way we were able to solve the queries of the students, we were able to improve the quality of the education or it went down? Just to draw the analogy. Hmm? It is still evolving. But if you try to complement the challenges, see that you have a hybrid work models created, where when there is a challenge, you get into the online mode. When there is no challenge, you get into the offline mode. If you embrace that hybrid work model, you will be able to get the best of the world. Yes or no? So this particular thing is really embracing this particular future. And you see a list of technologies which is really, really driving the change. Either you talk about the shared services model, or you try to talk about the cognitive intelligence, master data sets, digital recruitment process, using the drone assistance services, and so many transformation opportunities which are getting created. Primarily trying to talk about the BPOs. You can start seeing the fact that 
shared services and increasing command centers are playing a very, very important role. If you embrace this particular technologies and trying to drive the change, you make a bigger, bigger impact in the next generation. How many of your command centers are intelligent? Do you have command centers here? Yes or no? Yes. How many of these command centers are intelligent? You only get the data, statistics, ticket counts, alerts, notification, or it is making some decisions. You need to understand how can I transform that particular data sets or insights converted into the intelligent decisions which can really embrace. That is a key. If you are able to adapt to the situations and able to make the decisions faster, you can make a bigger, bigger impact. Today you see this human plus tech synergy is really transforming the change. The cognitive intelligence, you try to talk about the robotics or kind of an automation. The three important things, automation, sustainability and intelligent compute are playing a very, very dominant role. They are trying to embrace how you try to tie up this human and tech synergy. You don't want to replace the humans. I believe there is a talk whether the generative AI or the AI artificial intelligence will replace. No, they will be aiding and complementing their work to be done more efficiently. The work is able to do, an associate is able to do in eight hours, now he is able to do it in two to three hours. You are improving their efficiency and productivity, but do not undermine the task that you want to reduce the workforce, improve the standard of work quality. So if you really look into the overall best practices, what I want to convey the message here is, there are a lot of transformations which are getting created. First important thing is the digital first approach is very important for the, all the BPS to embrace. Second important thing is about employee well-being and the continuous learning and training. They need to adapt to the new changes. That is an important area where these people need to look at. Third important area is about the bringing in the ethical practices. Being honest, able to transparently deliver the things is also very, very key. The fourth important area what you need to really look at is how you try to apply the outcome and value driven metrics to measure the change. These are few important areas when you try to bring it as part of your best practice culture, you will make a bigger and bigger impact. Today you see that integrating this experience, improving the entire services through the automation and making it intelligent enough to make the decisions are the key elements. But that is not sufficient. You need to apply these other best practices to make it more, more, uh, to understand it more, need, deliver the things more effectively. And carrying a lean, agile mindset is important. Doing the things with minimum, but carrying that kind of a mindset is important. In, in a, fostering an innovation mindset, applying the lean principles can re completely reduce your cost and able to deliver the services much, much more efficiently. This particular chart tries to talk about a lot of tools, how do you manage and minimize the waste and other things. But in, in intent is develop that lean, agile mindset to make a more impact. I just want to touch upon the two important case studies which we were involved in. So there were, this is first case study was trying to talk about the transformation where they are more into the voice based communications. But they continuously face a lot of challenges about the disruption because of the COVID situations. And client started demanding that can you bring some kind of a better insights based on the data what you carry. So we need to completely transition from the entire journey of that, apply the digital first approach, brought in the relevant technologies to embrace that entire situations. Because we need to support the remote work infrastructures where we need to have the secure VPN connectivity. Integrated a lot of AI in the intelligent chatbots. Now there is a focus, additional focus is given on the generative AI in the space. And we have started upskilling our people. They were not only looking at the data what is displayed, but using that particular technology requires the upskilling of the people. And with the <coughs> data-based insights, we were able to completely transform and improve the service quality levels. And not only the customer satisfaction, but also there was a complete reduction in the call waiting times. That's what I'm trying to say. Empower the people with the right information at the right time. The second case study which I wanted to touch upon is about a sustainability. In the new normal, it's all about sustainability. We need to embrace the hybrid work model. This particular customer had a lot of challenges, but he wanted to create a difference 
by contributing to the global cause. Sustainability is one of the important lever every organization start pledging it. But if you are really looking into this eco-friendly model, you need to see embracing that hybrid work model is a key. Second important thing, institutionalizing the entire things with the green facilities can make a big, big difference. And digital document management with a less number of paper or no paper at all and continuous education and eco-friendly methods can really transform the things. Today, that is becoming a key differentiator when they are trying to propose any of the BPO services because they are running with their sustainability as a goal. They are able to reduce the carbon footprint and make a big, bigger impact. With that note, I just want to conclude my talk by stating that the best way to predict the future is to create it. This is a quote given by Steve Jobs, but it is important that you start find this particular technology thoughts and levers, not only empower the people by embracing the technology, make them more courteous enough to drive the change in the new decade. BPOs will be the, BPOs will be here, they are going to make a tremendous impact in driving a lot of customer experiences. Let's make the decisions faster collectively. Thank you.